So this is beginning of this project where I'm going to use this Razer drift cart and first of all upgrade the motor. This is the factory motor which I had already disassembled. This is a MY1016 HD which is a 24 volt 300 watts and then here I have this is a MY1020 36 volt 800 watts. So these are the factory battery from the Razer drift cart which is a 24 volt. I'm gonna daisy chain another 12 to make it 36 and pair the motor with this controller to replace the factory controller right here. And after upgrading the motor, as you can see this is the new motor. So this is the chain that came with it and the sprocket on the motor it matches the chain so that's good. However, if I turn the motor with the mounting sitting on top of the frame, it will sit higher than where it should. And I could either replace the chain with a longer one or tilt it and make a new bracket and make it sit vertically. The motor itself takes more space. Originally, the two battery packs is right here. I'm losing space right here, and I still have to add an additional battery. So I'm thinking the battery is just going to go here, right beneath the, the seat. This is the seat. Actually, no. This is the seat that came with it. It sits pretty low. The new setup, I, I'm thinking it will be sitting a little bit higher, and just enough so the battery will be on the bottom. The body that's going on top of it will be um, this Mini Cooper right here. This has been originally modified, lowered stands, camber and everything, but it was running with the power wheel ride-on setup, which was a six volt. I converted it to 12 and added additional motor because it was a single motor. It has some torque steering. So phase one was done a couple years ago. Dual motor, 12 volt, and it was fun. But then being right on, there's no electronic speed control. So it's full on, full off. So when the kids give a throttle, it jerks a lot and then when they stop it jerks again because it just shut off so it's it'll be much better with the ESC so you could do gradual acceleration and gradually stop which is like this guy right here this is uh, this was a Lamborghini Aventador ride on I did the same thing that I did with this but then um, again same issue the kids really didn't really play with it much so I'm gonna put some photos of how it was before and then this has now been converted with a Honda Minimoto go-kart body or frame with the body obviously cut off because the, the wheel base of the front and the back it's longer than the body itself so I have to cut the body in half which is no big deal um, it looks pretty ridiculous I bought this uh, carbon Kefler go-kart seat which has many holes on them but I bought it for like twenty thirty dollars so but yeah so the goal is to make something like this but even better because this one is driven by foot paddle and foot brake cable brake this one will be driven with the drift cart setup which is a thumb throttle and a hand brake like a bicycle. Oh, and I must up the power also because the goal is to mount go kart tires just like those, um, the Lamborghini and the go kart next to it. And then, if you can see by the basketball, I have a bunch of go kart wheels and tires. I made some 3D printed adapter that will allow me to mount go kart wheels. But the problem being the wheels being a lot heavier and bigger, this tiny motor was not able to power the cart with the, the wheel setup. So upgrading the power will be a lot more fun to, to, to power the, the bigger wheels. And overall, I can't ride these small wheels with the 
Mini Cooper body. It will look funny. So, yeah, this is the second day of this project. I did not do much on the first day, but I kind of have everything ready. I just need to get the project going. Okay, so this is a couple of days later. I had go ahead and decided that I'm gonna do it the right way, and I'm gonna be mounting the motor directly on top where the old motor was. Instead, I ordered some new chain that is way long and I'm not very good with chain bicycle chain and all, but I'm gonna try to get the chain on. And I had also removed the speed control, electronic speed control, ESD unit from the factory. This is again a 24 volt, 200 watt speed control. This new one is going to be 800 watts at 36 volts. So, and I had already uh, researched on all these wiring. Should be pretty straightforward. It's not going to be exactly plug and play. I might have to cut up some of the wiring after the harness from the original speed control and adapt these onto the new speed control. There's only the motor, the power, the electronic throttle, electronic brake which is basically a cutoff for the motor so you don't damage the motor and that's kind of about it and then I think there's like a charging port too. So I'm going to do the chain off camera because I'm not very good at it. I'm going to do this and then I'll show you after I get all these uh, mounted. There you have it, a little loose but I think I'm going to be able to work something out with that. So what you just saw earlier, I had to take off two more links uh, from the chain because it was still too long. I tried adding some wood block on the bottom to raise it up because this is hitting, well it's not really hitting but it's really close, a little bit grinding against. This is the tensioner. So I thought raising it up would get it over, uh, go, to go past the tensioner and avoid the rubbing but Instead, I shortened the, the chain and what I'm going to do is probably fold this back so the motor can slide back a little bit to get away from the tensioner and then I'll just uh, adjust the sprocket here to slide it back over to line up with the, the top sprocket on the motor. Now we have created this gap, it's no longer gonna hit. So I finally decided to use a piece of wood still, but a thinner piece, not this thick, but a little bit thinner because there was some slack here. And right now it's perfect. It, it'll turn without any hesitation. Um, definitely better with the motor rise up a little bit. So I think this is gonna be its final position. So I'm gonna put some holes drill some holes and put some bolts in and get the motor secured so we can move on to the electronic so after studying the connection diagram between the new and the old controller speed controller I have learned that what I have here is this is the throttle connection and this is a three wire throttle connection. So the old controller is a six wire. So I'm not sure how I'm gonna power this. All right, so basically I uh, took one of these battery out. So I got my 24 volt again, and I hook up this old controller that was 24 volt. 
and then once it was hooked up powered I use a voltmeter and check all of these terminals to see what voltage they give out and to, to find out what the remaining three wires sh should go so the yellow here is 26 volts so this is the full power so this is what gives the uh, indicator the uh, reading of the battery life that was left so I basically um, and then the blue which is black here on the other side of the plug is blue blue goes to the circuit board as well so that completes the circuit to, to provide the LED indicating battery life basically so um, that's what I did and now I got battery it says full because I'm reading at 30 whatever 9 volts so and then I actually do have another uh, connector here which goes to the brick which I believe uh, basically when I squeeze on the brick it closes the circuit and I believe it will go on this one here that says actually no it will go on to this one that says brick so that closes the circuit and just basically cut battery off from the battery so I think we're good to go so this is going to be my jumper for connecting the batteries in series. So this connector goes directly to the battery and this is the new controller and this is the battery con or no this this is the battery connector from the old speed controller and they have different connectors so also because um, there will be some length to travel from the speed control to the battery although I don't know where I'm gonna put the battery yet but this is definitely not long enough and um, I would like to just cut this off and solder it onto here but looks like the wiring for this is a little bit thinner because it was a 24 volt setup so instead of just using this to extend it I have some thicker wires here same red and black that I'm gonna be using to extend this connection with this connector so when it's all done this will plug directly into this terminal So I'm going to strip the terminal here and hopefully get some good solder into this connection. Alright, so I got the battery power cable connector all soldered up. Alright, so back to where I left off, I finally received the battery so I can finally test out and hopefully not set any explosion or shock myself and I'll test run, the everything is already hooked up, I might still have to figure out the speed, uh, the throttle because of that cable, 3 wire, 6 wire issue Alright, so finally I got my overhead uh, camera mount set up, so I have the battery connected in parallel, so 3 of 12 volts, I get a correct reading, or incorrect reading, I don't know what happened to the 3, but 39-ish volt out of a 3 12 volt battery pack, so alright, so everything is hooked up. I just have to plug in this guy and let's see no spark 
Alright, so I just got the brake uh, sorted out too, so I'm gonna try to show you with one hand. So right now, if I push the throttle, it the motor spins. But if I'm squeezing on the brake, and if I try to give power, nothing, because um, this this cable here goes through the brake cutoff or the motor cutoff. So basically, when this is uh, when the brake is applied, it cut off power to the motor to prevent uh, brake and throttle being used at the same time that will damage the motor. So, so now that I have all the wiring sorted out, the cart is basically completed on the drivability department of the built. So I'm just going to mount everything, put everything back together and then um, I believe I'll call this the end of the video part one in part two I'm gonna be starting to hack the Mini Cooper body and get it mounted onto the go-kart body so that should be fun I hope you guys enjoyed the build so far I try to document every trial and error and not just skip right to the success and the completion that way we all learn together and if you guys know anything that I missed that or I could do better or anything I wired up incorrectly, please let me know. Leave me a comment down below. If you enjoyed the build so far, please give me a thumbs up. That will basically tell YouTube this is a good video and they will recommend it to other people. And if you're new to the channel, I normally document my Tesla Model 3 build. But uh, I'm starting to implement some of my house project. One of my recent hobbies is building go-karts for the kids. And then um, some Arduino project. I'm going to be talking about my LED stairs project, which a lot of people ask about. And I have some really cool... I'm going to give you a sneak peek right now. It's a modular shoe case or shoe uh, storage that is made out of recycling... Amazon boxes and Target boxes or, or any sort of boxes that would otherwise be thrown away I figured you know instead of buying the fancy ones that people make for eight dollars a piece I could just 3d print but I'll leave all the detail for later and when I make a dedicated video on that and until then I'll see you guys next time and I guess my new slogan because of all these DIY projects would be if I can do it, you can do it too because that's exactly what I did. I watched what people did and I tell myself, hey, that's cool and I want to do it too. So I find a way and just make it happen. So see you guys. Thank you.